All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to apply what we've learned about integrated rate laws in order to find the integrated rate law for a given reaction using some data and graphing with the graphing calculator. Um, so we've got a chemical reaction that we're studying at 300 degrees Celsius, and it's the decomposition of nitrogen dioxide, as you can see. It's a reaction which we can easily study with integrated rates because it has only one reactant decomposing. So we don't have to worry about flooding the system or anything like that. So we've collected some data, as you can see in that table. Um, times are in seconds in the first column and the concentration of the reactant and NO2 in molarity in the second column. We're going to find the integrated rate law for the reaction. We'll, calc we'll determine the rate constant for the reaction at 300 degrees Celsius, the temperature at which the data was collected. And then we're going to write the differential rate law for this reaction. If you think you know what you're doing in this case, then just pause the video and jump in and try it yourself. And then you can play again when you're ready and see how you did. So I've got a calculator already set up and ready to go. And on my calculator, I, I'll just go back to the main screen, I suppose. I've pressed the STAT button. This is the TI-84+, plus, but a TI-83, TI-84s do very similar kind of calculations. If you have a different calculator, then you, you would need to just figure out how to use its um, graphing features. So I'm pressing the STAT button, and then option number one, edit. And I've already entered in list one and list two the times and the concentrations of the NO2. So we know from integrated rate law analysis that a graph of concentration versus time is the first graph we're going to want to make. So we're going to create a scatter plot using that data in just a moment. Um, but we know that that's to test for zero order reactions. We want to also see if, if, if about a first order test and a second order test. To test for first order, we want to create a graph of natural log concentration versus time. So list two here has my concentrations. So I've gone to list three, and I'm putting the cursor up on top of the L3 symbol like that. And now at the bottom of the screen, you can see it says L3 is equal to. So what I want to do is take the natural logarithm of all of the concentrations in list two. So I'll type LN and then L2, second function, and right above the number two on the keypad. So I'm telling it to take, for list three, take the natural log of all the data in list two, and then I'll just press enter. And it will fill down um, the, the natural log of each of those concentrations. Alternatively, you could just use a scientific calculator and one by one take the natural log of 0.01, the natural log of 0 0.00787, etc. Okay? Now just one note on the calculator display, it rounds off the numbers, but you can see that even though it says 0079 up in the list, the actual number was the number from our data table, 00787. Now, to test for a second order reaction, we want to graph the reciprocal of concentrations versus time. So in list four, I'm going to put the cursor up on top of the L4 symbol, and at the bottom of the screen now it says L4 equals. So I'm going to take the reciprocal of concentrations, which were in list two. There's more than one way to do this. You could type one divided by L2. That would work. Alternatively, you could use the reciprocal button on your calculator, which is right underneath the math button. Then you can say L2 reciprocal, L2 to the power of minus one and then press enter. And it will now take one divided by 0 0.01 is 100, one divided by 0 0.00787 is 127. And again, you could have done that just with a normal calculator um, one by one. So now keep this in mind. List one is where we have time. List two is where we have concentrations of NO2. List three is our natural log of concentrations. And list four is our reciprocal of concentration. Keep that in mind. We need to remember that when we make our graphs. So now, on a, on a TI-83 or 84, we want to go to the stat plot menu, which is right here above the Y equals button. So I press second function, stat plot. I'm going to set up plot number one. So I'll just press number one. 
I'll have it turned on, so put the cursor on the word on and press enter to turn it on. There are different types of graphs. The first one is a scatter plot, and I want my X list for all the graphs to be time. So X list should be L1, where we store the times. I'm going to use the first plot as my test for zero order, so I want this to be a test of concentration, sorry, a graph of concentration versus time, and we remember our concentrations are in list two, so that's ready to go. So now I'm going to go up to list, to plot number two, which, which for me it was actually it was turned on earlier, I noticed that, and I'm going to just turn that one off, and plot number three, just make sure it's also turned off. So right now, the only plot that's turned on is plot number one. To see this graph, we have pressed the zoom button on the calculator, zoom, and then option number nine at the bottom of the screen there says zoom stat. So zoom in on my stat plot. Show me the data that I, show me the graph of the data that I entered in the statistics menu. So option number nine, and there's the graph that we have of concentration versus time. So if I had a piece of paper with me, I would sketch this graph and label the y-axis concentration of NO2, label the x-axis time, and the, the thing that I conclude from this very easily is it certainly doesn't appear to be linear. So since this graph appears to have a curve to it, um, then I'm pretty sure the reaction is not zero order. So what I'll do now is I'll make my second graph. I'll go back to second function stat plot. And now I'll turn plot number one off. And I'll go up to plot number two and I'll turn that one on. By doing it this way, I can keep the three different plots. I'm not writing over them. So if I want to go back and forth later and compare them, I can easily do that. So plot number two I'll turn on. And this time I want my list, the time list, which is still list, list one, but now I want natural log of concentration. And I think I've used this in another problem earlier because it's already set up for list number three. That's where we had our natural log of the concentrations. And so now since I turned plot one off, plot three is turned off, the only plot turned on is plot two, I can press zoom and option number nine, show me this graph of natural log concentrations versus time. And I don't know, to me that looks to be a little bit curved as well. It's more linear than the last graph, but it is uh, definitely, to me, a little bit curved. We can check that in another way, but you'll notice up here in the corner there's a bit of a, gra a line showing up there. That's because of my y equals, there's already a function entered there, so I'll just clear that and press graph. There's the data. Now, if I, if I think this is linear, maybe, maybe that's looking somewhat linear, then maybe what I'll do is I'll graph a, um, I'll graph up the, I'll do the linear regression, find the equation of the line that goes through this data and graph it. And we'll see how well it actually follows a linear, a linear function. So press your stat button, stat, go over to the calc menu, and we're going to do linear regression, option number four. Linear regression is where you, you tell the calculator to find the equation, that's what regression means, um, that best fits the data which we think is linear, and that's why we're doing a linear regression. If we thought the graph looked more like a parabola, then we might choose a quadratic regression, option number five, etc. So we're going to choose option four because we think the data might be linear. And on my calculator, it brings up this menu, X list, Y list, etc. On some TI-83s, 84s that are older, um, it brings up a different screen, and I don't have time here to show you how to, how to do that, but I'm going to tell it that my X list is list 1, and my Y list, remember here, is the natural log of concentrations, which was list 3. Now, I want to tell the, the calculator to graph this for me, so I want it to store the regression equation. To, find, to tell it that, I'm going to press the Variables button, which is over here beside the Clear button, Variables, and then I'm going to go over to Y Variables and Functions, and I'll tell the calculator, you can choose any of them, I'll choose the first one. So find the equation of the line that best fits the data in List 1 and List 3, time and natural log concentration, and plot that as function Y1. And so now Calculate enter. 
So there's the equation of the line, and if we press graph, we should now see the line. And there it is being graphed through the data. Now, the data may have looked linear to you, somewhat linear, but now when you see that line over, over top of it, to me, it clearly looks like the first point is above the line, the last point is above the line, and the three middle points are below the line. It looks like it has a clear curve to it. Right? It looks like a clear curve. So I'm not thinking that the, that the uh, first order fit is best. So now let's, let's check that out. So we'll go back to stat plot. We'll turn plot number two off this time. And we'll go over to plot number three. Turn it on. In plot number three, we want to do the time again as the x-axis. So x list should be again list one. And we want this time to check for second order kinetics, so we're going to graph the reciprocal of concentrations, which if you recall was in list number four. So L4 should be your y list. Remember, you can change them, L1, L2, L3, you can just change them on the keypad above the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It says L1, L2, L3, etc. You just have to use a second function to get at those things. So now I'll press zoom to see my graph. And option number nine, zoom stat, zoom in on my stat plot. And there's the graph of reciprocal concentrations versus time. And just to my, to my eye, that definitely looks more linear than the previous graph. So I'm pretty sure we've got a second order um, situation. To prove it to myself, though, I'm going to do the stat and then I'll go over to calculate and I'll choose option number four, linear regression. My X list is still list one, but now my Y list is the reciprocal of concentrations. So second function and choose list four from down below. And I'm going to store the regression equation. Again, I press variables, vars. I go over to Y variables, functions, and this time, instead of choosing Y1, which is where I store the previous equation, I'll choose Y2, just so it preserves the first equation. So I'll store it as function Y2. And now I'll calculate. So there's the equation for the second order graph, Y2. And if I press graph, there's my, my data. It took a moment because it's still plotting the uh, y1 function as well. And there's the, in red, the y2 function, the second order linear regression. And it definitely is much better. It goes through all of the data points perfectly. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to conclude from this that because the second order graph, 1 over concentration versus time, was linear, that was most linear, that the, that the reaction is second order. Okay. So now on your paper, you should have sketched all three graphs. You should have sketched the graph of concentration versus time, which was a falling curve. You should have sketched the graph of natural log concentration versus time, which was also a falling curve. From those two graphs, we concluded it was not zero order and it was not first order. And now we've sketched a third graph, reciprocal of concentration of NO2 versus time. And in this graph, we have a rising straight line. Because it's linear, we've concluded it's a second order um, integrated rate law. So now if I want to write that second order rate law, I'll move my calculator for a moment. So part A, determine the integrated rate law for the reaction. You can do this by memory, or if you just think about the graph that we just saw, reciprocal of NO2 versus time was a straight line, we know that the slope of that line is related to the rate constant. We remember that. In a rising line like this, for second order graphs, M is actually equal to the rate constant. If it were a falling line, like we have in a zero order or a first order graph, then M was equal to negative K, because the slope is negative, but K has to be positive. So the equation of this line is, is the integrated rate law. So the y-axis, 1 over concentration of NO2 at time t, is equal to the slope, k, times the x-axis, times t, plus the y-intercept of this graph, 
the y-intercept would be 1 over the concentration of NO2 at time 0. So 1 over the original NO2 concentration. And again, that is a second order rate law. Okay? Part B said determine the rate constant. Well, the rate constant comes from the slope of that line. So if I go back to my graphing calculator for a moment, I want to see the slope of the line, but I've already cleared the, the equation. So one thing, what I can do is just press the y equals button, and pressing y equals there are my two equations. You remember that the first one was our, we were testing whether the first order graph was linear. The second one is for the second order graph. So the slope of that equation, it's got five million digits in it, but we can just round it off. 0 0.543 would be the slope of that line. So the rate constant, 0 0.543. Now what are its units? Well, the units on the y-axis are reciprocal of concentration. So those units would be molarity to the minus 1. And then the units on the x-axis were time in seconds. So since slope is just rise over run, the units for this rate constant are m to the minus 1 per second. Okay? The rise would be m to the minus 1 divided by the time, so per second, uh, on the x-axis. All right, and of course that's at 300 degrees Celsius. Oops, I just realized you can't see what I'm writing. 300 degrees Celsius, the temperature um, that we were studying the, the reaction at. Part C says to write the differential rate law for the reaction. You remember differential rate laws begin with rate equals. Now we know this is a second order reaction and it has only one reactant, NO2. So the differential rate law would be rate equals K, the same K that we just had here, times the concentration of NO2 squared. There's the second order differential rate law. Okay, So we have the integrated rate law, which comes as the equation of the linear graph the rate constant, which was derived from the slope of that line, and we did that using linear regression. And then options part C, the differential rate law, we knew it was a second order uh, situation, so rate equals K and O2 squared, second order.